Nuclear reactors To produce controllable nuclear fission in a nuclear reactor requires certain conditions to be met. First the correct fuel. The two nuclei that can have neutron induced fission are uranium-235 and plutonium-239. Uranium is a finite resource and less than 1% of the naturally occurring uranium is uranium-235. Most is the isotope uranium-238 which is not fissile. Plutonium-239 does not occur naturally. However, if neutrons are captured by uranium-238, the uranium-239 produced decays to Neptunium, then to plutonium-239. This is the process involved. Uranium-238 absorbs a neutron becoming uranium-239 and a gamma ray. The uranium-239 then decays by beta decay to Neptunium-239 emitting of course a beta minus particle and an electron antineutrino. The neptunium then undergoes another beta minus decay to become plutonium 239 and again an electron antineutrino. This plutonium 239 can then undergo nuclear fission and this can provide around a third of the energy in a nuclear reactor. Reactors that use this process are called breeder reactors as they're producing their own fuel. They can be called fast breeder reactors as the plutonium works best with fast neutrons, the uranium preferring slow neutrons. We need sufficient fuel to be present. If there's insufficient fuel, not enough of the released neutrons will produce further fissions and so the chain reaction will not be sustained. If the fuel sample is of such a size that, on average, each fission will lead to one further fission, the reaction will continue at a steady rate. This mass is called the critical mass. A reactor will have many fuel cells, each individually below the critical mass. When they're separated by control rods that absorb neutrons, the fissions will stop. When the control rods are removed, Neutrons escaping from one fuel cell can cause fissions in another fuel cell. We need the correct speed of neutrons. If the neutrons are travelling too fast, they're more likely to be absorbed by the uranium-238 nuclei, which will not then fission. The neutrons pass through a substance called a moderator, where they undergo many elastic collisions. Overall, no energy is lost, but the neutrons do reach thermal equilibrium with the moderator, meaning they have the same kinetic energy as the particles in the moderator. The absorption cross-section is important. For a neutron to be absorbed, it must collide with the nucleus. Taking the particles to behave as billiard balls, this will occur if the centers of the particles cross within twice the radius as I can demonstrate here. Here we have a billiard ball and another billiard ball passing at this point just collides. That marks the center of the path of the top billiard ball. One passing down here will just collide. This arrow marks its center. The absorption cross-section here is twice the radius of the balls or twice the radius of the particles. The absorption cross-section. For a neutron to be absorbed it must collide with the nucleus. Taking the particles to behave as billiard balls, this will occur if the centers of the particles cross within twice the radius, as I'll show with this diagram. Here we have a billiard ball, and if another billiard ball crosses here, it will just collide with the first. This arrow marks the center of the travel of the billiard ball. Alternatively, a billiard ball passing here will just collide. This arrow marks its centre. These two arrows are a distance 2r, with r being the radius of the billiard balls, apart. 
this is in two dimensions, of course the cross section would be in three dimensions. So the absorption cross section is equal to pi times twice the radius squared. But twice the radius is just the diameter. So we can say it's equal to pi times the diameter squared. For nuclear absorption, the absorption cross section or probability of capture also depends on the speed of the particles and the nucleus involved. Absorption cross sections are quoted in barns, where one barn is 10 to the minus 28 square meters. Fast moving neutrons have an absorption cross section of between 1 and 2 barns for both uranium 235 and uranium 238. Slower neutrons have a much bigger absorption cross section for U235 and a much smaller cross section for U238, making them much more suitable for fission. Here we have a simple diagram of the main components of a pressurized water reactor, or PWR. I'll start down here. We have water, which is around the fuel cells, and this acts as both a coolant, taking heat energy away from the fuel cells, and as a moderator, slowing down the neutrons and making absorption by uranium-235, and therefore fission, more likely. The fuel rods themselves are made of uranium. Here we have the control rods. These are made of boron, which will absorb any neutrons which collide with them. They can be raised, so exposing the fuel rods to each other, and leading to more fissions, or when they're lowered, they separate the fuel rods and reduce the fissions. The pressurizer here maintains the water, which is the moderator and coolant, at a very high pressure, meaning it can reach high temperatures without boiling. The water is passed through this heat exchanger, through which runs a pipe, curled like this to give a large surface area, and as the water passes through the pipe, it will pick up heat from the water, which is also the moderator, turning to steam. As it turns to steam it expands and shoots out here driving the turbine. That's connected to a generator and then to cables connected to the national grid. The steam will then be passed through a condenser and cold water will pass through the condenser too to bring the steam back to liquid water to go through the procedure once again. The whole thing is contained in a concrete shield to prevent the escape of radiation to outside the reactor. The control rods will be used to start up and stop the fissions, whereas to regulate the reactions in use, boric acid is added to the coolant. This also absorbs neutrons and can be used to adjust the rate of fission up or down as needed.